Okay, let's uh, let's get going here. Okay, welcome to the planning board uh, for Monday, July 6, 2015. Thank you, HCAM, for uh, taping this meeting. Uh, this is a uh, short, hopefully short, kind of special meeting uh, that we called uh, because we were hoping to get make some significant progress on the West Main Street project. Uh, that's the main subject for today. We will continue the public hearing on that very shortly. And then we have a lot of just miscellaneous uh, stuff to, to work on uh, afterwards. Uh, so uh, let's uh, open the continued public hearing for Zero Lumber Street and 77 West Main Street. This is a major project site plan review. REC Hopkinton LLC. So, uh, I think where we were is we were pretty well down the outline. We were into three or four items on the beta report, and then we are talking about uh, conditions and things like that. So, uh, why don't we talk about first what what you guys got done in the last uh, since the last two weeks, or sure. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So Kathy Sherry for REC Hopkinton. We have here tonight Paul Mastriani, Mark Allen from Allen Engineering, our civil as well as Lou Leveo, our architect. Um, so to regroup, it might be worthwhile to focus on the outstanding beta comments and items and just walk through those comments and then the deliverables that go with them, just as okay. a high-level overview. Would that be That'd appropriate? That'd be perfect. Okay. Um, so the first comment that we had, and I'll let Mark just get up the site plan. Um, I'll, we'll save the sewer connection for last, but there were a couple of minor changes to the site plan as far as labeling and dimensions regarding the easement. Yeah, so, those so those were the easy ones. Yeah. Rating and drainage easement for lot two and the access easement for lot three per the A and R plan that you saw last week. Okay. The other item was to provide the calculations and the plan to to show the 10% interior landscaping. And we, you would have that as a separate attachment, or Mark can go through it up within the site plan. Yeah, so we had uh, Waterman Design Associates make some vacation this week. We put together a memo outlining where we met the 10% minimum, uh, not including a few of the internal islands associated with the rear parking. So we, we definitely get the 10.2. I put it in the table of the zoning compliance chart on sheet three, and just showed you all the internal islands they add up to the 10.2%. Does anyone have any questions on that one? So when you add up the islands, what's the total number? Well, we, we showed you the 10.2%. It's yep. a minimum of 10%. Yep. So we highlighted and Mike Dryden put it together for you on a nice color plan earlier submitted. I just kind of showed those in black and white here uh, as we go around the parking lot for that 10.2. Again, it doesn't account for all of the internal landscape around. So it's actually going to be a little bit more than 10. So the actual numbers, if you're looking for those, it's about 57,000 for the total parking lot area, and we have about 5,800 for landscape area, interior landscape area, which gets us to about the 10.2%. Yeah, the total 10%. Okay. Lane, do you have any problem with those? No. So we, we should close that one out? No. Okay. Um, and then the, there were a couple of comments around the grading, um, resulting in the parking area between the new building and the existing 77 oh, yes. West Main. Yes. Um, so a couple of the open comments were related to that. So do you want to kind of go I'll through that a little that bit? As well, yeah. So on the grading sheet, uh, we had sent field crew out just to get additional topo shots where the two parking lots are going to merge. And Phil's concern was in the area between the, the where the, actually the existing parking is and how we're going to reshape that. So we've actually gotten more detailed topo up in these areas and show that we are uh, compliant with the, the grading uh, in this area. We did change a little bit of the area that's going to be disturbed. Uh, previously, we were going to cut off the sockout area in between here. We did realize we needed to pull it back another like 15 to 20 feet in order to make that grade acceptable. 
excuse me. So when you say you're compliant with the grading, do you mean that you reduced that uh, that incline that yeah, Phil so was worried about? Yeah, you leveled it out. percent slope back there, and we brought it down about three and a half. Okay, you reduced yeah. it. And what we did is we had a couple of ADA parking spots in this location where he was concerned. We already have more than we, we need, so we're just going to keep the four ADA van compliant parking spots in the front of the new building as opposed to another two over here just to take that question out of it. Go ahead. Clarification, I, I didn't get that from the, the notes, but you're lowering the grade or evening it out on the that north side of the property as well as the south side. Kind of. We're bringing it all up, actually, so as to match. If you look at it now, it kind of slopes away from the existing buildings. So now we're going to have to bring it up to this sort of concave parking area like that. Yeah. Okay. And Phil or nobody from Beta has commented on that, but we suspect we we've, we've got that one solved. Yeah, that one's pretty solid. Okay. Yeah. Quick question. Go ahead. What was the per I, I missed. What was the reasoning for moving the handicap parking from that side? We had we had two extras anyway. Yep. And it was eight percent before. Now we're down to three percent. Yep. Uh, ADA likes to see two percent. So we have we have basically one percent where the other four spots are. So just to take that out of the equation, we just. Took those two extra. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I think the next several items had to do with soil testing, um, stormwater management, location, right. and such. So. Right. So there were two two issues, two points in beta before. One was additional test pit information. So we went out and actually in the three areas of our infiltration basins, we went and did specific locations. We went out, field located them, dug six additional test holes, two per basin, got the results back. They were similar to what we had before. Um, the grand result of it all was that the, the small infiltration basin that was going to take the roof runoff would have pushed the grades up another foot. So what I did is simply just add it to the rear two basins. And these two bases just got slightly larger by a few units each, uh, and it very easily accepted the storm water. This was just a, there were only 18 inch Caltech units out front, it was very small. So these two can handle it adequately. And we kept everything above the groundwater heights for the, these exact test pits, as well as uh, this is the second point. Phil recommended that we go do a uh, hydraulic mounding analysis, which is basically how much will this 100 year storm event impact the depth to groundwater and width uh, as, as it relates to that area. So Dick Pizzi from Geotechnical Consultants, um, he did a report that's filed with you guys, found that the groundwater mound is about a foot and one inch, 13 inches roughly. So we set our bottom system two feet above, which is the state minimum. Uh, and that 1.1 is well above the two that were set. So, And that's the 100 year storm event. He also indicated in his report, you probably have, that the lateral movement that Phil uh, was a little concerned with was negligible. That all of the infiltration <coughs> is through the bottom, which is typical. The chambers themselves are two and a half feet wide, but they're three and a half feet, uh, two and a half feet tall, three and a half feet wide. So it's all the bottom area that's taken the whole. It doesn't, you know, it rises up for that two feet, but this very small lateral movement, and they're all set 40 feet apart. So we incorporated the groundwater mounting and the test pit data to change the elevation slightly of the of the stormwater and make sure that the mounting did impact groundwater. Okay. So it sounds like Phil had some validity in his comments. He did. He okay. did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was worth the exercise. Okay. And it's great that you got it done quickly. Yeah. He went from Jamaica. I understand. <laughs> That's right. The only area that I... It's not a Massachusetts town. <laughs> plain. Did you make a plain? No. Yeah. Uh, the only problem I have about this is I understand what you just said, and I read the reports, and I think I understood those. Yeah. But I don't know where the board is on this one. This is something we usually let Phil put his <coughs> thumbs up or thumbs down on, on this one. But... Uh, at that point... Um, I see that in the, um, that change about the slope, and I'm not that concerned about it, but sure. um, I don't see it here, but totally spelled out how, how you explained it. And I do kind of want Phil to... Particularly with the changing of the... 
the two, the leaching area. I mean, I, I, I'm just to have his perspective, but yeah, yeah, it's it's a little bit more of a change than I kind of really thought. What's that for? The, uh, the the leaching you know, with combining the two leaching areas, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of different than what we saw a couple weeks ago. You know, maybe that's where you need to have fill to say pine. yes, or pine. That would be a, a good good word. Yeah, okay. Nothing so much changed with the grading because we did take that out, so all the grading remained the same. Right. It's just that we eliminated one small basin and sure. added that water to the two other basins. Okay. So everything parking lot wise is the same. Got grading it. is the same. It's just we rerouted the roof runoff instead of going to the front. Sure. Back. Was this Phil on vacation? Phil went on vacation on Thursday, I think. Or He'll be back on Monday, 13th. Well, we can get somebody else from Beta to look at this. Somebody else has yeah, Matt Crowley from Beta was CC'd mm -hmm. in Phil's absence, and I've been forwarding information back. Yeah, we, we didn't. We, we don't have any information. We don't have anything. Else no, no, not today. He got most of that today, I think. Yeah. So. But it's a net net no change. It's just you're moving the runoff from the front. And now it's moving to the back. Correct. Just the roof. Just, just the right, roof. Right. All just the parking lot grades have not changed at all. Yeah. Except for between. Well, well sorry, yeah. 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 But, but the water's going to the same place exactly. anyway. Yeah. Water's just, uh, yeah. Water's it's just going a little less place. slower because it grades better. The, of the one parking area here. But as far as the new site plan goes, those grades have uh, stayed the same. It's just a matter of. You get di different desk pit data, and it just tweaks the elevation of where you set your chambers. Can I ask a question to Go ahead. So, how soon do we normally hear back from Beta? I know we won't hear from Phil, but somebody will we hear something this week? I would think so. Probably midweek. They usually turn them around in two days. It depends on what it is. Yeah. But I mean, for so might take Matt for a focus part. Phil, since he's less familiar with it, but mm -hmm. we should be but able I, to turn it around. I, wasn't Matt the storm one of the Matt's storm, storm, storm water guy? guy. He's the yeah, storm yeah. water guy, so yeah. he ought to he ought to understand this pretty well. He co-signs the letter. Phil writes it, I believe he co-signs. Co yeah. So, so I. I think I, I, okay, but that's a good question because we want to make we want to make sure that if we continue to next Monday that we're done because we got a half an hour time slotted. For, for this on that Monday if we need it. Is, is there any way, and, and we have to go through the rest of this, Yep. is there any way to, if everything else works out, to approve this contingent upon that? I don't know. Let's talk about it when we get to the end. Okay. Yeah. We'd be comfy because we know Phil's relationship with the Muse. The Muse didn't ask for this level of design uh, as far as the hydraulic mounting went. They asked for additional test bits, if you recall, yeah. and we went out and did those and verified them. Uh, so the mounting was in addition, you know, which we verified and we're comfortable with through geotechnical consulting. So uh, we'd be very comfy knowing that it's going to be okay. Okay. Kathy, what's your next one? Um, I think that pretty much covers everything. Is there anything I missed, Elaine, or from your perspective? Yeah. We talked the ground. The revision to the operations maintenance plan for stormwater, that got Submitted. Yeah, there wasn't a revision, but Phil just wanted to take it out of the drainage analysis report and just have a standalone. Oh, okay. Which I did and provided. Okay, so yeah. that's that one that's done. Yeah. Yes, we had all the components he had noted last time, so Got it. there were no additions. Right. Okay. Slightly larger. So the volume that was needed in the front. We just split between the two. We just, I think we added 10 chambers here and 8 chambers here. How do you split it between the two? Is there pipes going from both? Exactly right. All three, all three were interconnected. So you'd have an overflow into one that goes into the second that goes into the third. Okay, so even though Muse is part of that deal? No, the, oh. the system is independent of the Oh, the, when the Muse one is... is That's all it on its own and drains out of Okay, so the Muse one is in the middle of the parking lot, not shown on that. It's kind of or shown as an easement. Correct. Yep. Okay, I understand now. Yep. How, how are you going to work that from construction sequencing? 
Good question. We have Massiello Grant, who's not here tonight, but uh, Grant uh, is working with Paul and with the Muse. Obviously, this is going to have to be done first. So we're going to be building that as part of Grant Massiello's uh, contract and then just sort of back charge the Muse. Okay. But we recognize that's primary. It has to be built. Okay. Now let's... While we're talking about items similar to that, let's talk about the timing of the access driveway. Just while you're standing up there and in the access driveway, we had some words and then you had some different words. Is one side of that driveway a double barrel? Both sides are. Oh, so, so there's two lanes on each side. No, I'm sorry. No, I misunderstood. No. One side per is 16 feet wide, but this this opens up to 26 feet wide, which is, if you recall, we had some uh, extra space for cars that are going to be parked there for buses. So okay. this side is 26. This is 16. I think it goes down to both 16s. So the middle, I believe, is 8, eight, eight or 10. So basically, at this point, we had asked you to build to that, for, to there at that point. Mm -hmm. And there was, that was one of the conditions right. that you right. guys had. We're still building we're to still that point, that. and what we're proposing is to create a 20 foot, 24 right. foot wide roadway right. um, divided in half. Right. Because we won't need the full double, I mean, the full right. landscape island just for that secondary access to the right. rear. So we were thinking of just placing the binder down at 24 feet wide so that you'd have two lanes of access to that second second point. This okay, the and then, then the muse would take out some of that binder? And just Exactly. They'd have to take out about four or five feet of that strip so they could replant it. Issues, the uh, timing on the uh, subsurface uh, structures, the uh, gas lines, water lines, all those things that have to go up the road won't necessarily be ready by the time the road will, will begin. Right. So rather than put down an entire complete road to get torn up, mm -hmm. sort of the compromise is to do a little bit more than half, and then they can use the other side for bringing the utilities up. Okay. The and but you can't just bring the utilities and stop them either. Right. Right. Well, I mean, that was the other thing too. You can't just go. You can, you can explain it better than I can. You can't just go 25 feet past, stop it right there, then the muse, do the whole thing all over again. I mean, that's why we're just, we're basically just doing it as an access. So we're offering, right, exactly, the secondary access to be, you know, more than adequate with grade and whatnot, but it, it may not be to the exact final grade and with all the utilities, the drainage, the water, the gas. So, so are, are they going to put all the drainage or the utilities in the side that you're building? Or are they going to be there? It would, no. So what we, we would do is we would bring it up to uh, subgrade and find the grade. Yeah. Just for our half of the road, 24 right. feet. And then they'd come back and do their utilities on the other 24 feet and just take out the asphalt. Did, did they happen to plan in whatever got approved that the utilities are on the south side of the luckily, road? Luckily, the gas they and the sewer, I mean, the gas and the uh, water are on the south side of the road. Okay. There's a couple of catch basins drainage that are on the north side that they'll have to pop in. Got it. This, uh, I think it's only three. Actually, only two. Two cash basins of animal. They're going to go in and dig out. Which one is this one? Three. Number three. Everyone comfortable with that plan? Yeah. It seems like there's got to be a fair amount of coordination. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The two groups. Right. And that has been going on between Massiello and their contract. Any word on where the muse is on their sewer permit? I haven't heard I since I was away. I haven't gotten an update either, yeah. so I don't know. <clears throat> they still plan on closing August 15th. Oh, well, that's the important thing, right, Paul? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I would assume they'll have it by then. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, at this point, I think we. We've gotten all the outstanding technical issues covered at least. I think we may be looking for Phil or Matt to opine. Uh, but let's... Uh, are there any other public comments on the...
on this hearing. Okay, seeing none, let's uh, going go on to the uh, site plan review standards and plan revisions to be met. I think everyone on the board is familiar with those requirements. And I think we're really into uh, special permit type of requirements, which is on page where, oh, here we go, page, page 7, I believe, right? Any of your memo? The uh, special permit. Well, relevant conditions are start on page 4. On 4? Oh, the special permit, those are the ones we've already passed yeah, right. yeah. on page so four yeah. that are relevant. And then if we look at conditions for approval, starting on page seven, and I believe, Kathy, you've, you've commented on these formally. We have. And anyone that doesn't have a alternative and original in our memo was you're comfortable with. Correct, that was but, acceptable. But, but I'm still going to go through them. Okay. Okay, the first one is recording of the A&R plan to combine the, the lots uh, prior to the first building permit. That's actually been completed, just so that you know. So you've already done it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Great. Uh, submit the uh, agreement to find an easement for Muse. Okay, that's prior to the first occupancy permit. Then three is the driveway, and we have we have three. We have the original. We have a proposed alternative. My, the third alternative was if the town really doesn't want to concern itself with what that basically a third access is. They could just let them build whatever they need to for access because there already are two other ways in and out. So it's mostly for the trucks and construction yeah. vehicles, probably. Well, I thought, I thought that new building required some turning of trucks to get out of there. Right, so there's some trucks. But not the general public. You can pose it as construction vehicles only. Some, something of the sort. What board members think? The alternate works for me. I don't know. I mean, it's only going to be for construction. Actually. Well, I think it's more than construction. Oh, okay. Trucks, delivery trucks. Right. Delivery, delivery trucks, and, and other people might be. If if you get stuck in that back parking lot, you're going to be wanting to go out that way. I think. It will be a paved access drive, yep. so it is available for use. I prefer the uh, applicant's proposal because if Hawkins and Muse uh, is not complete, um, and the, this applicant will complete the access request. So the, that is not mentioned in the alternative. The alternative says whatever is needed, which is fine, but I like that their proposal spells it out a little bit more. I agree with Frank. <coughs> okay. B. We'll go with B. No, okay. Uh, item four, sidewalk. We've, we, we've talked about that at the last meeting. So we're all set with that. We do not block striping. We talked about it, I think, at our last meeting. And the event is snow gets to be too much. You're going to get rid of it. Uh, let's see, 31, this is the left turn analysis that we talked about in our master plan special mm -hmm. permit. Item, item 8, we have a uh, question on the pole turn, light turn off. Mm -hmm. The original, we required all pole money lights to be turned off within 30 minutes of closing. Your proposal says 90 minutes. I think everything else is pretty well the same. 
it was just the time factor in feeling that 30 minutes might not be enough after business is closed for the employees to clean and close out and actually get mm -hmm. out of the building safely to their vehicles and yeah. such. I so, agree with that. I mean, having, having worked in industries you know, mm -hmm. where you, you close, there are times you're still there an hour later. Yeah. And you could have customers just get in under the wire and, you know, just barely out of the building. So we had proposed 90 minutes to allow enough time for that, but there went to discussion. It's a little different than what we did before, but every case is different. What do people okay. feel? Is that consistent with what we've done with other situations? Lane? Like that? No. That's why I brought it to your attention. <laughs> because the legs are going down to what's... Um, What's well, adequate for safety and security? So oh, so they're not being shut off. No, they're just being shut, shut, shut down to safety level. Right. Oh, 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 oh. So there's still going to be lighting. It's not going to go because this is black. off. Oh. Okay. This says turned off. Yeah, it says turned, turned off. off. Reduced. This is when they're closed. Level of lighting so reduced to what is required for safety and security. So oh, perhaps they right. could be worried about it. Uh, oh. Hmm. When business are close to public, the level of should be reduced to what is required for only safety and security. Boy, that, that doesn't... I understand on and off. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't understand. But how do you, you... You don't turn these lights down, you either. Typically, they're not You'd sequence, you could sequence them so that some of them are on and some of them are off. That's what I've seen at, at large car dealerships. They'll alternate the lights that turn off at different times. Based on the number of poles so we have in such, would that present an issue, though, for employees and where they're going to be parking? Well, we don't. Why are we even doing this? Oh, there, there's open for business we, lights. I know, I, I did this, but why are we very doing bright, this? And then this is closed, this is reduce level, level, and then well. at some point I'm imagining you want to turn off lights so, altogether so, so, so to save energy. Like 60. The issue with reducing the lighting is we don't have, I mean, we have a fairly wide spacing and we don't have a regular shaped parking lot. So unlike a car dealership where you could just alternate every other light right. to get half the lighting, here you'd have some serious dark spots, yeah. which could potentially be a safety hazard. So I mean, that's that would be my concern. Well, can't you, um, the chairman, yeah. can't you um, turn off lights that are far removed from the building and keep them well, that might be, off that might be, But that might be where the employees are parking, Claire. I mean, that's where you would typically encourage it. Right. We're going to have more employees parking towards the exterior. the back of the exterior. Of the building. And you need to have that lit, and you need to have access to the mm -hmm. to that area lit. I think 60 is, is, is that, it's, that's better, a, it's that's better a than 30. Than 60, right. Should we go to 60? Well, my, qu my question is still, my, Can we yeah. just my, 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 question is, my question is still, you know, we're talking yeah. about turning off and, and then we're later on saying, you know, reducing. Yeah, it's just unclear. The second sentence. So, so are we talking about reducing the lighting after 30, 60, or 90 minutes, and then off at any designated time? No, no. Okay. Well, is, is that it's still, accurate? Unless the board, that isn't what the board's voting for. Right. I mean, so what, what's written here is, is so, 78 West Main Street, 85 West Main Street. Same language. Says yeah, it shouldn't be Can off. we just say reduced within 60 minutes? After all businesses on the site are closed? Right. It's right. It's, it shouldn't even say off, right? I'll pull my well, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to say if, if we're just talking about reducing to safety level, I mean, we can leave it at 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. It'll still be light. But what, what is it ideally that we would like? We would like businesses closed, everything's tucked away for the night, and then all the lights are off, and everyone's tucked in, and it's a nice yep. quiet town, or do we want some lights on all night? Well, I mean, there, there'll, we there'll, be, there'll be some lights on all night, just but those might be more building lights, because you're worried about the security of the, mm -hmm. the, of the building. I mean... And like, we typically don't light a parking lot up, even though it's vacant at the middle of the night. I mean, well, then, you know, then you then might have a place for our teenagers. And, and the polling should be 60 minutes, because people will be working in the building. 
a good 40, 45 minutes after closing. I can't, can't hear. Was it 45 minutes? Well, no, no. I'm saying, no, I'm saying it should be 60 minutes. We should keep the poll lights on for 60 minutes because there will be people working in the building, especially with restaurants, 45 minutes after closing. Don't disagree. Okay. Don't disagree. So are we talking about keeping the original with the addition of making the 30 into 60? That's, or? That's my understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? Fine. Okay. It sold for sixty. <laughs> okay, nine. Modified original. Let's see. Elimination of all standing pylon shall be turned off when the lad's business is closed. So this is basically We added in the thirty minutes after the businesses are closed, so if they're closing at nine or eleven, we're just allowing thirty minutes after that. May I ask why the sign needs to stay lit once the business is closed? That's not a safety issue. It tells the public we're closed. I'm fine with turning them off. <laughs> again, that's, and okay. again, did I even do that? Was that me? If I get more rent. We're fine with that. We're fine with that. We don't need okay. to. Okay, we'll, we'll keep the original then. Yeah. Okay, mechanical is equipment is screened. That's our standard condition. Dumpters shall not be emptied before 8 and after 5, particularly because you're near residential. 12 is a standard condition about inspecting the plants if you need some help. Applicant responsible for mitigating all construction related impacts. Applicant shall regularly remove uh, trash and construction trash and debris from the site. You can't bury it or burn it. $5,000 performance guarantee. I don't know whether we talked about the amount, but that's typical for a project this size, which you should get back. Uh, 34, or, uh, and then we're talking about, 16 talks about sewer. Found. These are two new ones that were added that were just recently added that we didn't provide formal comments right. on. Right. No. 16 basically is the one that I think Elaine doesn't recommend, but it's there in case we wanted to go forward. Uh, basically, 16 requires it all. Wastewater and sewage to be generated at the site be serviced by treatment and disposal services on site unless otherwise approved by the town. Municipal sewer has not been approved by the town for the site. The site proof by this decision shows municipal service because the applicant has formally applied for a sewer connection, believes the request will be granted. If the request is not granted, the applicant will revise the site plan to show on-site sewage disposal and file an application to amend the site plan with the board. And then... We're fine with that, right? Except for the last part. The We're fine with everything except for the last... And, the and last. then the last part is the sticky part that I wasn't even quite fine with. No site work okay. shall content commence in the site until a formal approval for municipal sewer connection has been received or the site plan has been amended to show an on-site sewer disposal system. I. I don't have a problem with you proceeding with site plan work. It's at my own risk. At your own risk. Exactly. Clearly at your own exactly. risk. Exactly. Uh, you can't get a building permit, though, without a sewer connection. Right. So, we but that would allow you to get, get that would plan. let you get some bulldozers started. Yeah. Uh, do, do people feel, I mean. Yeah, that's your point. It's at his risk. Right. Two, if he gets the town connection, everything's all well and good. If he doesn't, then he's got to come back here and revise the whole thing. Yeah. And, until uh, we approve it again. Yeah. Um, so basically, 16, if we were to approve it, I would add the word somewhere, something that talks about his own risk. And second of all, no work shall commence uh, on the building until a formal connection has been. Done. 
the, the building permit, you're not going to get it anyway, so yeah. it's kind of a belt right. and yeah. suspenders condition anyway. Right. Um, so you're not going to say no site work? No, he, he does the bulldozer at his own risk, he's all set. Right. You know, do, would I would I be installing the Caltech system on day one until <laughs> until uh, you know where it's going to go? No, probably not. But but I don't take as much risk as Paul does. <laughs> Mark, where would the on-site possibly go now that you have even more groundwater information? Yeah. Uh, again, I think we'd have to eliminate this infiltration basin. We have to focus it somewhere in the rear back in here. Which then makes things a lot more difficult. Yep. We'd have to go back to conservation to increase the size of this again. Uh, we need formal, well, we already have test pits, but the board of health, we need to witness the test pits now. Uh, and likely the grading of the parking area would change back there, so. It's a mess. It'd be difficult. We won't build it. Right. What was that? We won't build it. Okay. So, so we now know what 16, 16 with all those changes of approval would be acceptable to members of the board? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. And 17, do not block signage and pavement marking the interior of the Lumber Street intersection. I think we talked about them. We agreed that that would be something last time we talked about it. Yeah. So is that different than number five? Yeah, I, that might have just been yeah. okay. Yeah, we did add the, uh, the hatching. Right, the on the interior. Bill okay. recommended, similar to what uh, yeah. will be done on Lumber okay. Street. Okay. okay. Yep, that's good. So. I'm sorry, I still have a question about 16. Yep. And, and I'm confused by Paul's comment mostly. So. Are we, did we need more information, but we have more information from the Board of Selectmen, and then we're okay? Oh, the Board of Selectmen basically said that it's up to John Westerling to decide whether or not the permit should be in, issued or not. So that's Paul, still Paul had to formally apply to the DPW. Separately? Okay. Right. We've and submitted the formal application to the DPW. They've done an initial review of it and have come back with some follow-up questions. So we're just in the process of responding to that. That should go out today or tomorrow. So, so based on what we know today, that's the process. Really I saw the questions. Uh, there, weren't, there were more questions than I expected, but, <laughs> but they weren't 100% out of line. I didn't mean to go in depth yeah. on that. It's but I mean, no, I mean, process. that's, I, you know, this board's on record of saying that we support sewer for this piece of property, partly because it's going to be very difficult to build mm -hmm. as, as planned. And now, a w couple weeks later, the analysis that Phil put them through even makes it that much it clearer it that that a town sewer is the right way to go for this project. Yeah. Uh, so it's, instead of being either or, it's when you said not build it, you mean the whole thing? Probably not. I was gonna, I didn't expect you to say something like that. So I was, yeah. I've been saying this to these guys for months. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we recommend it to the board selectmen, Concom recommended the board selectmen, board of health recommended the board selectmen, board selectmen, punt it to the DPW. After several months of kind of wishy washing, and quite frankly, you should have had a formal application in a long told time not ago. I understand. That's. I gotcha. That's true. I We're following the process now, and actually, they've been responsive back and forth as we, so I would hope that we'd have an answer within, based on their turnaround to date, another week or so, depending on when we get our answers back. So. And to Ken's point, we've answered all the questions. They were reasonable. And I think that our answers and the supporting data that we're providing as well just proves that it's just making it harder and harder to build this building if, if we don't have time. So I think, board members, we are at the point where we have 
Are there any public comments to the conditions, by the way, before we move on? I have one question. I recall Claire asking about shade trees, and I just recall that there's nothing in here. You talked about the potential condition um, saying from the menu of trees that you might want the requirement that there be some shade trees. No, no. My question was in the list of shade trees. Um, the list, the list of trees that were listed as shade trees. Did they all truly provide shade? Because there were a few, like a river birch, that was a very thin cover. But it wasn't. Um, no, we agreed to the the palette concept was acceptable, as I recall. Okay. Any other public comments on this site plan review? I think where we are is we're waiting for fills of pine in a sewer decision. And we will certainly have betas of pine, I guess I should say it, probably not fills, by next Monday. We'll, we will make sure that, that we get that. And we will try to see if John Westerling is going to make a decision on the sewer on and, Monday. And at that point, would we be able to should I take a boat there? I may be my intention, yes. It, I mean, I, I'd almost like to get it done tonight, but, right. but I don't. Can we do it based on the approval from either John and or feedback from Beta, or is that something that we unfortunately wait on? You're not going to get it from John by Monday. You don't think so? No. We, we got, I mean, we got, be still contingent. We got 16 as a condition that right. kind of we are a condition I don't I mean I, I, I personally yeah. I'd be okay approving it on the condition of our peer review and with the applicant's understanding that any work done is at his own risk with this condition number 16 yeah. I agree 16 puts the ball in his court I agree also I will be away next week and Pat can't vote, but you clearly have enough votes anyway, so you can vote next week just Who as well. Who else is not here next week? I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. That's still enough. Positive. I'm here. I'm here. But we never know what may happen. We but you can do remote participation. <laughs> what? You can do remote participation. Do we have a conference slide? No, you haven't. Right. Right. <coughs> Could we do a vote with the full board? Could we do a vote right now? Could do a vote with the um, conditions. Yeah. I guess the problem is that from the Board of Appeals um, standpoint, when the board's been appealed in the past, the board can only approve a plan that's done. There can be no modifications. So if beta comes back with some close changes, that's it. Then, right, approving. then we don't, it ends up not being an approval. You just, no, you're just approving this plan, and that's it. Right. You can't approve it with any conditions that there be any changes. Yeah, that's, oh. we, we, we got yeah. badly yeah. nailed on that one. Oh. All right. uh, so if beta comes back and wants different change, that's something different. It's too late. Too bad. It's too late. And Elaine, a majority means a majority of the nine, not a majority of yes. those present. Five. So it's five. So right now you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So you could still lose one and have your five votes on the 13th. Yep. Yep. Not seven. No, no, she's talking about for next week. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. You've got six and you need five. Okay. Well, that's probably the best method. <clears throat> we, we're, we're basically in our outline we're really right to the vote and just a final blessing on those those items. Um, entertain a motion to continue until 
the 13th at 730. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, so we're going to get this done. 730. Yeah. We have another hearing at 8. I'm hoping to be out of here by 745. Paul, you don't need to bring the whole crew as long as Beta says okay. Just Kathy Happy and you. Kathy and you. <laughs> the important people. I'll represent. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, approval not required, 28 and 30 Conley Hill Road. I mean, what are they doing in this one? I'm suggesting a lot line. Meets all the uh, it does. frontage and... The frontage doesn't even change. Right. The frontage doesn't change. It's a little kink in the line. The kink in the line? Yep. So we're, we're approving a kinky it's already, plan tonight? It's already been signed by Holliston. Oh, so Holliston. Oh, oh, in Holliston. Yeah. Oh. Look for a motion to approve the NR. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Oh, I see. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. How many? Two. Two. Where are we up there? Six. Here. Slide this down to What's the side? Here's the special pen. Okay. Second is uh, lot releases for Conley Hills Estate. This is to release lot 20. We already have a bond for this, Elaine. Look for a motion to release lot 20 for Conley Hill Estates. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, the next item is Christian Estate Subdivision. You want to change the road base material? We'll eliminate the first stone layer. Uh, concurred by our inspecting engineer thinks it would be a much better surface without it. So, look for a motion to approve the request to modify the road base uh, detail. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you Just vote? Oh, go ahead. What if it becomes a town road at some point? It, this is so far away from the town road that you'll have to adopt to rebuild it entirely. I mean. What? I would say suitable. God. Yeah. Obviously, town meeting board accepted. There's not much you can do about it. Yeah. Is there, is there a much financial difference between using the stones and not using the stones? Oh, well, the. Well, the, the According to Mr. Pine and, and the engineer, that this reclined, reclaimed asphalt material he's using to, to make it is similar to the what the road was on uh, the Fruit Street field originally, I think. And then originally, I think it's been since upgraded a little bit. But uh, path. Uh, the engineer said it's a more durable surface. In this particular application, it doesn't need the stone to make it stronger. And we did write in our condition that this is a private sub road subdivision, clearly spelled out in that. So I think we're ready for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, next, Claire. I think it's your letter for 9 Church Street. Yeah, I, don't, I have my draft, but I don't have the new one because I didn't get my packet. Can I look at yours? Sure. <laughs> Elaine needs change. Something. Yeah, I, 
I just Oh, but it's the same wording. Same. Oh, then I didn't need it. Thank you. Okay. Did anyone have any questions about that letter? No. Are we ready to send that letter? Sounds good. Okay, uh, motion to uh, send the letter to the Board, Board of Appeals. Second. Moved and seconded. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Any, any negatives, any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, the next is the draft letter to MassDOT re regarding the replacement of the Fruit Street Bridge over the Sudbury River and the requirement for a rail. Elaine kind of drafted one very similar, I think, to the last Sudbury crossing we did. I didn't find the old one. Oh, says the same thing. Did, was there any questions on that letter? I thought that was good. Yep. Okay, so we're all set for that. Mm -hmm. Look for a motion to uh, send that letter to uh, the uh, engineering firm for. So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Any one opposed, anyone abstained, motion carries. Okay, Elaine, why don't you take us through the master plan update process and where we kind of are and you know, uh, one of the things that well, I want you to start thinking about is we've got a bunch of chapters that are coming up that need kind of a synopsis of the key issues that are in it and maybe draft goals for the board. And what I'm suggesting is that each member of the board take a chapter and we're going to assign homework for members to work with Elaine or Jennifer uh, to, and, and you, the member that owns that chapter is going to be the person kind of taking it forward and going to spread it out and lead the discussion on, on those chapters. And so in Elaine's memo for tonight, there was a list of the chapters. But now, having prepped you all with, you're going to listen carefully because you're going to get homework out of the end of this <laughs> thing. So that, uh, anyway, go ahead, Elaine. So, the, so there are six topic sections. And we've already reviewed the land use and the open space sections. Um, coming next week at the next meeting or the one after that are housing and transportation. Then economic development and community facilities will follow. So they all have been or are being updated to provide statistics that are current and information that people might want to hear in the, in the master plan. But what they do lack is the goals and recommendations. So that's the blank part that needs to be filled in, needs some brainstorming. Um, because um, we're going to send this out to other boards and committees and to the public to comment on, and then you're going to have a public forum. So you want to have some goals and recommendations in there when it goes out for people to react to. So I think that's where we are. We need people to come up with some ideas to work with. I mean, we, ha we have the ones that are in there from the last draft, you know, but I don't want people to put the blinders on with what was there. Mm -hmm. And we also have, a, you know, Jennifer is the former town planner of Hudson. We have her input where she is looking at it with, I'll say, a fresh set of eyes mm -hmm. also. And then we have new members here that, you know, to look at it with fresh set of eyes. So each, each chapter has yeah. a has, a, has an issues section where you identify issues, and so out of those issues that are identified should come those goals and recommendations. Yeah. And also, the visioning. We've already incorporated most of that okay. in the chapter. Yep. Each each section has a division the theme. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So we're, we're yeah. Thank you very much. Yep. So. I think we're at the point where somebody needs to volunteer to take w each one of these. So the first volunteer gets gets their first pick. Frank, which one do you would like? Economic development. Okay. I'll take a teammate if there is one. Okay. Yeah, that, that one's probably a key one anyway, as it is. So, I'll do the community facilities and services. I'll work with John on that.
Let's see. Matt? Want to take transportation? Matt's got transportation. I'm going to let you pick the next one. <laughs> Didn't we already say land use and, and open space was done? It doesn't have goals or anything. It doesn't have goals. Yeah, he's, he's helping. I'll work on land use. Okay. And let's see. Since I'm here, I get to pick, right? I'll take the housing and residential. And that means that natural, cultural, and open space resources ends up with Frank Sebo and uh, Pat. Uh -huh. Frank Sebo, Pat. Uh -huh. And I can work with them on the open space <laughs> portion of that. Okay. Yeah, given that we assigned you that committee. Yep. <laughs> That's okay. Can I yeah. just ask Elaine for a little more clarification? Um, you said there is going to be a certain, there are surveys that have been sent out. Are they going to be sent out to give some guidance? Or I'm not quite sure where these ideas are supposed to come from. Are we just sort of supposed to brainstorm on our own? or Brainstorm on your own, given the surveys have done in the past. Right. Um, and the visioning. Okay. I, you know, I'd suggest that you might make an appointment with Elaine, you know, and talk it over with her and, you know, spend some time thinking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this is not something we're trying to get done for the next meeting type of thing. This is a, this is a you got it until we get the plan done and spread it around and try to make it happen. And then the data from those past surveys is available where? Are they available? Well, I guess it depends on the surveys. I think the most recent ones were kind of open space related surveys. Um, previous to that, there really haven't been general surveys. You just said it's so come from surveys that have been done in the past, so I wonder if those are surveys that the land use department has in their files. I mean, I keep lots of paper, but I don't have all the yeah, surveys. No, some topics really haven't been any surveys, like transportation, for example. I don't think anyone's really done yeah. anything like that. So it depends on the topics. If, if, if anyone thinks that they need to do a survey on something to help, that might be part of our process, too. Yeah, we could do something on the website. Yeah. Okay, because we, uh, and, and we'll keep trying to work on this because uh, it's one of our goals from the last, last couple of years that we haven't got there. Okay, uh, I'm trying to keep this relatively short. Uh, we've got some minutes to be approved. Uh, the, I'm going to start off with the, the, the 8th of June minutes for approval. There is one correction that I, I know, and maybe somebody can remember what they did. On page three, when we were talking about um, extending the uh, Laurel Avenue extension, the minutes say Mr. Weissman will move to continue the public hearing, and I entertained a motion. I'm trying to remember. I remember the discussion. It was a hard to get a discussion on that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, everyone is uh, at the end of the rope at this one, but I know I didn't move to get. Okay, why don't we why don't we give it to Mr. Durso on that one? Other than that, that was the only question I had. Other really, comments? Was really, because you opposed it. Um, I think you might have opposed it, but I think maybe I, at the end of the day I convinced you to, to give them one more shot. By the way, we did write a letter to them that, Elaine, you got to get out to the board members, that unfortunately we're going to have to continue it one more time because there's not going to be enough of us on, on next Monday to, to do anything about it. But. Uh, uh, that's, not their, that's not their fault. That was not their fault. But we haven't heard from them at all either. So I suspect that we might be 
And what was Elaine's letter? What was the guts of what you wrote? The board had intended the 13th to be the last, but because there won't be enough members, the one after that will be the last. Stay of execution. <laughs> you got to stay, yes. Yeah. Okay. Other comments to this set of minutes? Seeing none, I uh, look for a motion to approve as amended. So moved. moved. Second. And seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. And then the last is the minutes for the 22nd of June. Anyone have any comments on those? On page three, I left the meeting, but I came back after about <laughs> three minutes. I was temporarily indisposed. I think I you must have missed that next vote and then you came back. Okay, so we no. probably missed the Spring Street and then then uh, for a returned. Okay. So with that correction, are we ready to approve? So moved. Moved. Second. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Uh, what? What? We're done. We're done. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you could just yield a minute to um, no problem. Sure. Come on up. Take the hot seat so the camera can see you. Oh, I'm camera ready after track today. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ann Boschel. Um, do you need to know anything else about me? All right. Uh, <laughs> six and Beauchamp, six angels by. Um, I've got three um, basic areas of conversation that I'd like to bring up. Um, mostly points of process. First, um, I'm interested in finding out how the town um, learns the proposed use of a business before it comes in. I've seen the permit that um, Crosspoint had, or the permit application that they submitted, and there was no indication of use aside from um, prior knowledge of what CVS Pharmacy, um, of personal experiences with CVS Pharmacy, and then aisles and that sort of thing. So I'm just wondering, can um, somebody in town request CVS or Crosspoint make a statement regarding what they plan to use the space for so that a determination of use can be made based on an actual declaration of use? Is there a process for that? Uh, uh, I mean, somebody could ask if they haven't done that. Who would that be? Well, it would be the person issuing the permit would, would be the one who would be most interested. Okay, so uh, can, can that happen? But I, I mean, think <laughs> I'm asking for that to happen. Well, but I think there has been communication between the building inspector and Okay, so just not, there's nothing of public record. Well, it yes, be, yes, it yes. Public record if there was communication. There, I, for, I have seen a letter, I think, from the building inspector to Norman Kamalo that stated that cross, uh, the CVS was a use that was allowed by right in the zone. So if you're looking for that as something to appeal, there is a public record to that point. It's opinion by the building inspector, and I believe, and I only play a zoning lawyer on Monday nights in front of local TV, uh, but uh, I believe that's appealable. Yes, I, I believe that as well. Public record. Right, okay. So yeah. there's no, um, there has been an attempt to gather information about the actual use aside from the plans that were submitted? Is that right? So I believe from the building inspector. Okay, so we'll need to... I, I mean, and when, when the billing permit kind of does that whole process, if if absent of site plan review, mm -hmm. if 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 they were changing the exterior or the parking lot or all yes. the things that try to trigger site plan review, then we would be part of that process. Right. But right now we're not. 
Well, my understanding is there is some oversight and relationship, and honestly, men, you know, this is. Uh, no, but I'm, I'm looking no, for yeah. I'm looking for guidance and information. Yeah, gotcha. Sure. Um, I'm not trying to you know I'm not no. saying why haven't you X Y Z. But oh. yeah. But if I I might just add if there was a, if the issue was use at the very best it would be stated that it was a pharmacy drugstore use and is that or is that not allowed it would not come down to who the tenant is. I mean, if there were any restrictions, it would be whether that type of use is or is not allowed, not whether that particular entity, right. I'm not CBS, um, is allowed. I understand that. Yeah. I don't, yes, I don't disagree. Right. I, I mean, the, I the fact that. that it was CBS yeah. wouldn't raise any legal red flags. Right. No. The only no. The thing fact that it was pharmacy. It was a use right. that was not allowed right. in that area, but who does the use is, is immaterial from yes. a legal standpoint. Yeah. Except for what they're going to be doing. Right, right. I mean, if, yes. You can't have a law that says CBS is no not No one's asking you for yeah. suggesting that. But no. It, for, and, and this is just in the advice aspect. Uh, which we're taking. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the zoning enforcement officer, who is also the building inspector, he works for the Board of Selectmen, not for the planning board. Just just, yes. just a point of fact. Right. His decisions are appealable to the Board of Appeals, which is not us either. Uh, and, uh, you know, building permits are appealable because I think implicit in the building permit is that that use is allowed for that purpose. Mm -hmm. So that's a, when before you get issued a, right. a building permit, he does a zoning review to make sure that he's not issuing a permit for something that's not allowed. Right. So at that point, those have been issued. Right. So they, and they are appealable. I, you know, okay. not sure whether you're going to get anywhere with that one, but that's, you know, the other thing that I kind of worry is, you know, doctor's offices and other type of things are allowed in the zone too. So, I mean, you can have a nurse giving shots in this zone. You know, it's different than pharmacy, but, you know, well, yeah. it, we went through something very similar with the Dunkin' Donuts. Is Dunkin' Donuts a restaurant or a retail store? Well, in the zone, both were allowed. So, regardless of what part of the Dunkin' Donuts is a restaurant today, what part of it is, is a retail store, they're both allowed, so it's kind of a... Kind of a That's not this situation. Okay. And and if there's an appeal, I mean, you have to have grounds for an appeal. It can't be just because you don't want it um, or or like it clearly. Yeah. And then I, as my understanding with appeals, you all there's the issue of standing, certain parties. And I don't know how it works with a commercial site, but I, I don't, you have I don't to know. have standing. Like, a, a I think you can be a member of the community. My understanding is. He might be. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm just that that's yeah. something you may have to yeah. find out about. Yeah, I don't. I don't like think anyone's butter, really. Or I, my understanding it was like an, a direct butter or an a butter of a butter gave you standing. I but to be uh, anywhere in the community. Don't communities. look at the building inspector's zoning opinion. I think anybody. Could. Mm, maybe on that that's time, not in a residential. They're, they're, they're appealing. Well, whatever. Anyway, you, in our package, you some, something else. Go thought. ahead. Okay, next question. Um, <laughs> so um, I also, well, this might be um, moot or something that you'd rather me ask somebody else as well, but um, I know that the state does, or I believe that the state gives some legal weight to the master plan when issuing permits, and I'm just wondering if you've ever seen that play out in Hockington, because um, if they've actually been referenced to a master plan when there's some um, lack of clarity. The master plan is... Guidance would that be a good word to use, as opposed to "thou shalt do." You know, usually in a master plan, because because we kind of usually ask in general, is it in conformance with the master plan? Is when we do a site plan review. If you look at our master plan, there's there's words that I can find some part that'll fit, some part you know, and it's kind of a preponderance type thing and 
it's it's more of a guidance type thing. That, no, so it's, it's, uh, my understanding is that in Massachusetts they do give legal weight to the master plan, um, not more than the bylaws, but yes. if there's. Um, but but I, but I I don't know whether that. But that's not in Hopkinton. Well, the master plan usually comes with a new use as opposed to one retail use versus another. I don't I don't know. Yeah, and this is maybe not um, I, an everyday occurrence in Hopkinton. So maybe What would you suggest that um, is out of line with the master plan or uh of like project? Oh, I don't know, maybe can you address um, have you read through the master plan carefully about I know that there's diversity of businesses. How that would be, yeah, how that would be in conflict with a CBS at that location. Well, there is um, there is wording in there that says they asked residents how they would feel about chain stores, and the majority of residents said they would prefer that there weren't chain stores. I mean, there's that, you know, there's that language from it. And then I, I believe diversity of business, which, and I, I mean, that's not being played out here as well. Um, so unfortunately, you're talking to the board that. Did site plan review on free cleaners in about two years time, so. <laughs> so you're okay with not having diversity, even though the master plan says that people want diversity of businesses? Is that what we, you're saying? We would, we would like it, but property rights trump that, that request. All right, and so the final, um, from, from me, I don't yep. know if there's anything else. Um, I just want to get on your radar, and I know that there are a couple of different options for going about this, but. I would like to request that you consider adding medications to the drive through restrictions in Hopkinton zoning bylaws. I have five copies of this, <laughs> and I'm going to keep one for now, if anybody okay. is interested. Sure. I assume. Yes. Really do you want to Is there a contact question? Uh, my email's on there. The Great. I just... The advisory will be starting up. Yeah. I just typed this up, so yeah. it's just, I'm yeah. just a person. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I'm going to... You know that the bylaw reads drive in, drive through, or drive up uses, but excluding the dispensing of food or drink, and I would like to add or medications. Um, I've got a few points about why I, why Hopkinton and other towns prefer to limit or um, not permit food and drink drive throughs, and those hold true for medication drive throughs. So the increase in air pollution and threatening air quality increase in traffic congestion and threatening pedestrian environments, which we know from the master plan, um, Hopkinton wants to, especially in certain areas, um, support pedestrian environments and reduce traffic congestion. But in addition, medi medication drive through threaten patient safety compared to walk-in pharmacies. So there have been actual studies on this. Pharmacists spent less time and te technicians more time with patients at the drive through counseling area and um, patients at the drive through received a lower amount of information relative to patients using the walk-in. So they're getting less information, which um, you may know pharmacists are required to counsel uh, patients on the use of their medication uh, or they lose their license. Um, and so they're getting less of that information that's required by law and by the Department of Health and Human Services. And then also there's um, a strong link between dri using the drive through and getting dispensing errors. Um, so uh, Dr. Zeinbach is a pharmacy re researcher, and she says, maybe we ought to stop and consider, am I likely to get the same level of service from the drive through as I am actually interacting face-to-face -face with a health care professional? Um, so I just want to get that on your radar that that's something that we're going to be pursuing. I would love um, the planning board's support. Whether you know, no, let, me, oh, let me tell you the process. Well, I or do you know? I know, I mean, I'm vaguely aware, I haven't been through it myself, okay. so I don't, I'm not intimately personally sure. aware, but I know I could get signatures, which I'm you know, oh, willing you don't to have do. To do all that. Or I could work with yeah. but, you guys well, what, to get it to We have a subcommittee that we will appoint in August, and it's called the Zoning Advisory Committee. Uh, there'll be one or two members probably from the planning board on that, and then we typically get. Well, 13 or so citizens, and when you go to town meeting, um, that's they're the first step for the planning board articles, and so we kind of delegate to our subcommittee, the zoning advisory committee, uh, 
come up with some good ideas to fix our, our, our zoning requirements. And those are, they have a public hearing. It's their second meeting that they, you know, we constitute them, appoint them. You're welcome to, to apply to be on the committee. As we take most citizens that, you know, we're looking for fresh, fresh meat to, to put, put, put in to do some work for that. Uh, and last last year, the, that committee put together something like was it eleven articles or something like that for town meeting. Uh, so you know, okay, well, you know, and and after they recommend it to us, which usually happens in the January time period, then we as a board will sit there, have a, a full public hearing, and then make a decision whether we recommend it onto the town. Uh, and uh, you know, some of them are exactly like this. To you know, change one, one of the one requirements a little while ago was to take the drive-through window out of the Board of Appeals' hands and give it to the Planning Board because we do the rest of the site plan review and just thought it'd make it more efficient. And Board of Appeals agreed to that. But so we do big changes and little changes, and and uh, you know. That's the process that we'll, we'll go through. Could I ask a yeah. question? On the drive through Elaine, um, suppose that prohibition were to go through. Would this company not be, grand, uh, not be grandfathered or whatever because they came in before the law was passed? It would only be grandfathered if they got a special permit before the first hearing was advertised. Okay. All right, so just because they're property owners of that kind of business doesn't give them any protection unless they put a stake <coughs> in the ground before, before we get, get a law passed. Yep. Thank you. Okay. More? <laughs> That's all I've got, but I just, I really want to open the communication with, I guess, every, all the um, mm -hmm. members in, in Town Hall, and I have been... Um, we're just barking up all the trees, so um, please do you know, let us know if um, there's a procedure to follow or if there's an angle to take. Just, just a point of clarification. If going through zoning advisory committee with this, we'd be looking at next May's town meeting at the earliest? Yes. There is a tradition in Hopkinton that, and it's a tradition, not a law, that the town meeting only looks at zoning articles at the annual town meeting. That That is not, in my years here, there's been some special town meetings that have, like, did the legacy farm zoning yeah. at a special meeting, but those are few and far between. Because it costs to add a special well, meeting, but there is a special meeting coming up. There is go likely going to be one because we didn't spend all the money that we need to spend. So, um, and, so and we have a school that we want to build. This could be kind. This could be. It could be tacked on, but but our exact process is is tied to the. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, so we have to hear. We have hearing notices and all sorts of other stuff that that kind of puts so the it petition together. route would be an option? You could do a petition route. Uh, you need on a special town meeting, if I remember, like it's like either 50 or 100 signatures or something like that, which that would probably have no problem. But I mean that, and you could also do a petition route for the annual town meeting with only, I think, 10 signatures. We will still have hearings on it, and we will just make a recommendation, yes or no, to the town meeting. But at that point, if if it goes through the whole ZAC process, the planning board would sponsor it. Mm -hmm. If if it's not, for example, we have Mr. Tetlow that we're going to rezone some of his land. He did it as a citizen. We still had the hearings. We we made a recommendation, but our process was much much shorter. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we're required to make a recommendation, I believe, on all zoning articles. It could go through the whole planning board ZAC process, and after the public hearings or just within the planning board, the board might vote not to put it on the warrant. So in that case, I guess then your fallback position would be to still move it to the warrant as a citizen's position. I mean, sure. just because it goes through ZAC right. is no guarantee the planning board pulls them. But sometimes. we could accelerate the process 
Yes. And aim for this special town meeting that's yes. coming up. Yes. Okay. So I um, knew that, and I just didn't want to. Um, I mean, especially after watching this meeting, um, <laughs> which my, got my head spinning. I'm like really impressed with everything you guys do, and I don't want anyone to think that as a group we're trying to bypass. You know, we really are working on working with the community and this is this is typically so. the type of ideas that that have come out you know a lot of lighting suggestions that have come out uh, we had one graduate student that was working on parking lot coverage that we did I mean there's there's some of the ideas that go before town meeting a lot of landowners have concepts for what they want to do Sometimes the planning board, sometimes it's Elaine just trying to rewrite the rules to make them easier to read. Uh, but anyway, this is also a good advertisement for people that want to get on to the Zoning Advisory Committee. We're going to be taking applications. So. All two of the people watching? Well, yeah. <laughs> hey, you never Cat. know. Cat. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was one of the two. So, I, I like okay. the suggestion. Yes. Make a suggestion. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, Sustainable Green Committee might be interested in working with you on this. Oh, thank you. Remember that. I mean, but uh, I suggest maybe you reach out to them. Uh, they meet twice this summer. Thank you. Anyone else have any thoughts for Ann? Just please remember to apply for Zoning Advisory Committee. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Which is just an email to me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 the application <laughs> process is pretty, right you know, we, we would love sometime to get hundreds of applications to, to work really hard but and have to pick people from it. But so far, we've been, everyone that's applied, we've appointed. So as long as... Hundreds of people bar. don't it's go. Very high bar. No, it's, it's it's interested people <laughs> bar. That's yeah. um, so. As far as the process for issuing and poten potentially revoking a permit um, or a appealing a permit, nobody here has you, you. All your hands are clean. Is what you're saying. Nobody has anything to do with that here. Is that uh, uh, what yeah. I'm understanding? Correct. I guess the situation. Yeah. Because it's only right. interior. Right, only interior, so so the planning board has no jurisdiction over over it. Where we expect to have jurisdiction is we expect that we will probably do a land taking to straighten the corner out. Mm -hmm. At that point, site plan review will be going on, and this board will have to weigh in on that. And I know that one of the basic requirements for a new CVS site is to actually have pylon signs. Is that something that they would have to come to you about? They when they ask for their pilot, not for the planning board. board and building permit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, about the permit though. We mentioned. We, did you mean also the liquor license, or is that that's a different thing? Yeah, that's a different thing. That there's um, so little clarity with what's going on with the liquor license. I don't even know what. Well, that's <laughs> what questions yeah, yeah, that's not us either. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. We, we know almost, you probably know more about liquor license than most members on this board, quite frankly. <laughs> what are you saying about me? <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so, Emily, do, are we covered, I think? Yeah. I think so. I really appreciate your time, everybody. Nope. Thank no you problem. so much. And if, and if you want to make sure you get on our, today was a really short night, so it was really good. Give, give me a call beforehand, and uh, we can put you on the agenda if you, you know, if you really want to. But sure. also willing to talk informally yeah. at any time if you need some help. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think that concludes our business for tonight. Look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Anyone want to stay longer? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone's opposed? Those Nobody abstained? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, motion, uh, motion is uh, passed and uh,